Hello friends, today's topic is ultra centrifugation. So, before going to the process of ultra centrifugation, first let's see what is the centrifugation. By definition, we can say that centrifugation is a technique which involves the use or the application of centrifugal source force in order to separate the particles from a solution on the basis of their differences in size, shape, density, viscosity of the medium and also the rotor speed. So, the centrifugation is a process which involves the application of a centrifugal force. So, here we are separating a mixture of components. Here we are applying the centrifugal force in order to separate the different particles of a mixture on the basis of their difference in size, shape, density, the viscosity of the medium and also the rotor speed. So, hence we can separate a mixture of components into individual or the separate particles on the basis of the differences in their size, shape, density, etc. And for this, here we are applying the centrifugal force. And this process is mainly used to separate two miscible substances and also to analyze the hydrodynamic properties of macromolecules. Hence, it is mainly used to separate miscible substances or miscible mixtures and also to study or analyze the hydrodynamic properties of the macromolecules. Here, more dense components of the mixture we are analyzing will migrate away from the axis of the centrifuge or they will move outside while the less dense components of the mixture will migrate towards the axis that is more towards the center of the centrifuge. Hence, we can separate the mixture into different uh, two components. Here, more dense components will move or migrate to uh, away from the centrifuge or they will move outside while the less dense components of the mixture will migrate towards the axis or move towards the center of the centrifuge. Hence, we can separate the more dense components and also the less de dense components of the mixture. And the device we are using for this the centrifugation force is known as the centrifuge. That is, it is a device which are used for separating the particles from a solution on the basis of their difference in size, shape, density, etc. So, first we will see what is centrifugation. Centrifugation is a process of separation of a mixture by applying the centrifugal force. Here, the different components of that mixture will be separated on the basis of the uh, difference in size, shape, density, etc. And also, it depends upon the rotor speed also. And it is mainly used to separate two miscible substances and also to analyze the hydrodynamic properties of different macromolecules during this process. The more dense components will move away from the axis of the centrifuge while the less dense components will move towards the axis. And the device used for this process is known as the centrifuge. So, next we will come to our topic that is the ultra centrifugation. Ultra centrifugation is also a kind of centrifugation. It is a specialized technique which is used to spin the samples at exceptionally high speed. So, the centrifugation we are carrying out at exceptionally high speeds is known as the ultra centrifugation. And the ultra centrifuge is a centrifuge which is optimized for spinning the rotor at a very high speed. And it was first invented by a Swedish biochemist that is Theodor Swedberg in 1923 and he won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1926 for his research on colloids and proteins using this ultra centrifuge. So, the uh, centrifugation process which is carried out ex at exceptionally high speed is the ultra centrifugation and the device used is known as the ultra centrifuge and it was first invented by the Swedish biochemist Theodor Swedberg in 1923 and he won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1926 for his research works on colloids and proteins by using this ultra centrifuge. The first one is the image of an ultra centrifuge and next is the Theodor Swedberg who invented the ultra centrifuge. Then coming to the instrumentation of the ultra centrifuge. 
Ultra centrifuges are available with a wide variety of rotors which are suitable for a great range of experiments. So, ultra centrifuges will be available at a wide variety of rotors which can be used for different kinds of experiments and the most rotors are usually designed to hold the tubes that will contain the samples and the swinging bucket rotors allow the tubes to hang on hinges as the fixed angle rotors are made up of a single block of material and hold the tubes in cavities whereas the sonal rotors are designed to contain a large volume of sample in a single central cavity. Some sonal rotors are capable capable of dynamic loading and unloading process of samples while the rotor is spinning at high speed and the preparatory rotors are used in biology for pelleting of fine particulate fractions such as the cellular organelle. So, uh, coming to the instrumentation of the ultra centrifuge, there are different kinds of rotors available. We can select it according to the use or the need. And it is, hence it can, this ultra centrifuges have a wide range of application or hand can be used for great range of experiments. Coming to the different types of rotors, uh, most of the rotors are designed to hold the tubes that will that we are going to load the samples. That is the most rotors uh, or the all kind of rotors are designed to hold the tubes that contains the samples or the sample we are going to analyze and coming to the different types of rotors the swinging bucket rotors is a one kind of rotor which allow the tubes to hang on hinges here the tubes containing the samples are hanging on hinges and the second one is the fixed angle rotors which are made up of a single block of material that will hold the tubes in cavities here the samples are are loaded in the tubes which are placed in cavities and the next one is the sonal rotors which are designed to contain large volume of sample in a single central cavity here large volume of a single type of sample are loaded in the single central cavity and it is known as this kind of rotors is the sonal rotors so here are some sonal rotors are capable of loading and unloading of the samples while the rotor is running at a high speed so we can load and unload the samples in some kind of ultra centrifuge having the sonal rotors while the uh, motor is running and uh, preparatory rotors are used in biology for pelleting of uh, fine particulate fractions like the cellular organelle so so depending upon the type of experiment or the Depending on the use, we can select it, which kind of rotors we want. And then coming to the principle of uh, ultra centrifugation, the denser the biological structure, the faster will it will sediment in a centrifugal field. And the more massive a biological particle, the faster it moves in the centrifugal field. So the denser the biological structure, the faster. So uh, highly dense uh, particles will uh, sediment faster compared to the others and the more massive a uh, biological particle the faster it will move in the centrifugal field and also the denser the biological buffer system using the slower will be the particle movement and in the centrifugal field and uh, next is that uh, the greater the frictional coefficient the slower will be the particle movement and the greater the centrifugal force next the faster will be the particle sediments and the sedimentation rate of a pa given particle will be zero when the density of the particle and the surrounding medium is equal so the principle of this instrument is that uh, the denser the biological structure the faster it will sediment so highly dense uh, structure or highly dense particles will sediment at first and the more massive the biological particle the faster will it move in the centrifugal field and it will fastly settle and the denser the biological buffer system we are using the slower will be the particle movement and the greater the frictional coefficient that is the friction between the component and the neighboring environment then will the uh, particle movement will be slow and uh, the greater the centrifugal force then the particle movement will be faster and uh, uh, and the sedimentation will also be faster and the sedimentation rate of a given particle will be zero when uh, the density of the particle and the surrounding is equal. Next coming to the types of ultra centrifugation, there are two types of ultra centrifugation. 
ultrasonification. First one is the analytical ultrasonification and it is mainly used to separate the components of a solution on the basis of the difference in sedimentation rate of the different components of that particular mixture and it's mainly used in the isolation of the non-living substances, nanoparticles, colloids and also used in the uh, separation of viruses also. So first one is the analytical ultra centrifugation and it is mainly used to separate components of a solution based on the difference in sedimentation rate uh, of the different components of that mixture and the main application is used in the uh, isolation of uh, non-living substances, uh, viruses, nanoparticles, colloids etc. And the second type is the preparatory ultra centrifugation and it is mainly used to isolate and also to purify the specific particles from a mixture such as the subcellular organelles. So there are mainly two types of ultra centrifugation. First one is the analytical and the second one is the preparatory ultra centrifugation and coming to the analytical ultra centrifugation here with the separate, separate the components of a solution on the basis of the difference in the sedimentation rate of the different components of that particular mixture mainly used in separation or isolation of non-living substances, nanoparticles, colloids, viruses etc. And the second type is the preparatory ultra centrifugation and it is mainly used to isolate and also to purify specific particles such as the subcellular organelles. So these are the two types of ultra centrifuge that is analytical and the preparatory ultra centrifuge coming to the analytical and ultra centrifuge it is mainly used for the analysis of a small sample size and also built in optical systems to analyze the progress of molecules during the centrifugation process and it will mainly uses relatively pure samples and also it requires some pre-treatment and it is mainly applicable only for the pure samples and the determination and it is also determined means the sedimentation coefficient and also the molecular weight of different molecules. Beckman model is an example of this analytical ultra centrifuge and the second one is the preparatory ultra centrifuge which is mainly used for the large sample size compared to the analytical ultra centrifuge and there is no optical readout collect fractions and also to analyze after the run and it is mainly uses less pure samples can be used so it do not require any pretreatment and uh, it mainly estimates the sedimentation coefficient and also the molecular weight of the substances and it is generally used to separate organelles and also molecules and the most widely used models are L565 and also L575. Then coming to the different applications of this uh, ultra centrifuge, first we will see about the applications of the analytical ultra centrifugation and it is mainly used in the determination of the purity of macromolecules, determination of the average molecular mass of the different solutes in their native state, study of the changes in the molecular mass of molecular complexes using either sedimentation velocity, sedimentation equilibrium or both and also used in the detection of the conformations and also the conformational changes of the substances. So the application of analytical ultra centrifugation first we can use for the check the purity of different macromolecules, determination of the molecular mass of the solutes, studying the change in the molecular mass of the complexes and also used in the detection of the conformation and also the conformational changes. Next is we will see about the preparatory ultra centrifugation used in the subcellular fractionation process, affinity purification of the membrane vesicles, separation of the DNA components, colloid separation and also used in the virus purification. So the application of the preparatory ultra centrifugation, subcellular fractionation, affinity purification of the membrane vesicles, separation of the DNA components, colloid separation and also used in the virus purification. Then coming to the advantages of this process, first one it is very compact and also occupy only small space, highly efficient and also low sample is required for analysis and also two immiscible liquids can be easily separated. So the major advantages are that they are highly compact and also require only small space, highly efficient and uh, only low sample is required for analysis and also two immiscible liquids can be easily separated by using this method. 
Next is the disadvantages. It is a uh, compared to other techniques. It is a little bit complicated, complicated construction and also limited capacity. And uh, compared to some other techniques, it is a somewhat time consuming process also. And also it is a little bit uh, expensive method also.